and we're live. And we're live. Right. Uh, Mitch and Steve, explain to the folks that what are you what? What? Uh, this is your one stop shop for just, you know, sports, fun, and just riffing, uh, which is why we, we come at you as often as we can. With, yeah. uh, I'm the intro guy, but thanks for cutting that off. Really appreciate that. Anyways, Bubba, uh, explain to the folks at home why we haven't recorded one of these in approximately 75 years. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I was actually trying to recount the last time that we did one of these. And, don't think it's necessary. Um, all, all the, the fans have been up in arms, and rightfully so. I'm so sorry to everybody that's been waiting. But, you know, it's a little bit of like a, uh, you, know, you know, making them wait for it. And it's kind of like, oh, you, you, for, you know, you forgot how much you love us. And then we go away for a second, and then you miss this type thing. I think they call uh, that uh, edging. I think they call that edge. We edged our fans, Mitchie. Huh? Yeah. Meanwhile, an associate that I work with uh, is trying to set up direct deposit and sent me their account routing number. <laughs> I should follow up and ask for the social security. And like, hey, buddy, I actually don't uh, deal with that. Why don't you, you go ahead and put that in online? I mean, that guy's going to be bankrupt ASAP. Yeah. I need your mother's maiden name and also the mascot for your high school as well just uh, that's common yeah. knowledge but here's the thing when i was i was trying to figure out hey, when was the last time we did one of these i i couldn't and i didn't really care enough to actually look but what i will tell you is i got on the zooms and i i had a that's when you know moment i had yeah. like eight recent zooms one of them was not you yeah it's like hey it's been a while zoom saves it for a while i feel like it's been what does that make it a month i don't know it's been a while hey, life, Anyways. life gets crazy you know we haven't talked we haven't got a chance to touch Deshaun Watson situation. No, we haven't. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds By like you've been touching. Probably. Multiple fans, multiple fans reached out to me just so you know. How do you respond to the, okay, no, straight face. Let me. Mitchie sees multiple fans reached out to me. How do you respond to the allegations that you're a big fat giant pussy? <laughs> Yeah, I think that those are those allegations are uh, you know unwarranted, uh -huh. and uh, they're not based on any fact. I categorically deny, I categorically and uh, aggressively deny everything. That's fair. That's fair. Sure. By the way, what do you think about the new facial hair, buddy? It's been a, about a week or so since this came in. What do you think? You like the beard look? I think because when I didn't have any of this, when this was all covered up, not gonna lie, I look like I shouldn't be within five hundred feet of a playground elementary school when it's just the mustache but i got the old nectar collector growing in i got the little flavor saver down here what do you think what do you think about the new facial hair huh i think it works i, I think i kind of have a hard and fast rule about facial hair i can't really grow it so you know it's got to look really bad for me to be able to throw stones if you will um yeah the pedophile uh concept though i don't know i think you're borderline there um but I think overall it works. Needs a little more time to maybe fill in. I'd like to see what it, what it, you know a, a well kept. You got a, a you know more of like the full beard. Give it a little bit more time. I can't really but, grow right here. I think because I got a bunch of acne as a teenager. Like you can kind of see the, like I got some acne scarring right here. I don't know if that's impeded right. hair growth, but I mean you've seen me with a with a beard or so. It doesn't look shitty. I don't think. But uh, I'm trying to picture it though. I don't. Not like a full beard, but like you've seen me with like you know a little bit more more facial hair, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No. That's true. I think, I mean, yeah, I think the stash works, man. I like, maybe, maybe I'm a stash guy. Maybe I'm a stash guy. Who knows? Huh? Girls like the stash, by the way, too. I'll do that. I don't know. Maybe I got both, but we'll see. Um, let's talk sports. Let's talk some sports. By the way, what's your thoughts on cryptocurrency? Uh, I think that I have no idea. Like, I, I don't like it. It sounds like it, it, the, it sounds like it's the future and that I, uh, I know nothing about it, man. I mean, but they got this new crypto, they got this doge coin. I hear PD Gonzalez, our friend of the show, um, uh, equity stakeholder in the operation. Uh, but unfortunately we can only have two partners at a time. So you know, it's an ongoing development, ongoing development. Petey Gonzalez. Uh, uh, just Petey, Gonz Petey Gonzalez. Let, let's talk Petey for a second. Man okay. of the people. Man of the people. Let's talk Petey because we love Petey. 
Now, here, here's a couple, a couple of thoughts. When it comes to cryptocurrency, I have no idea. I, I don't know anything. I've just, I've heard things here and there, whatever. Sounds like uh, Bitcoin, uh, very legit and uh, could be the route that, uh, you know, the world's currency is going to. I don't know how fast, whatever. That's what like, you know, some pretty smart people say. Some people are like, no, it's the devil. It's not going to work, whatever. Ooh. It sounds like that's the most legit one. Dogecoin, I heard, is just kind of one that like piggybacked off of people oh. having this fake currency. I, I don't know. I can't wrap my head around it. I don't know. And uh, so therefore I am paralyzed from doing anything or putting money into it. Although I hear a lot of people that I respect and that are like, you know, not just reckless or doing it. So that's my thought there. Petey Gonzalez, wow. ladies and gents, Petey Gonzalez, this fella, yeah. he sends us, <laughs> he sends us bets that he, he sent, he said, are you ready for Petey's parlay? Petey yeah. parlay. In a group chat. Parlay. He sent a parlay. I don't know if any of you guys out there like to, you know, sprinkle a little some, some every now and then on the okay. games. If you yeah. do fine line sports, that's where you want to go. It's a blast. I go through phases on and off when I when I love to do it. Now, here's a, a tip that I got from one of my good my good buddies uh, that's that's very good at this. Um, is like parlays you kind of want to stay away from. Like here and there, if you really like one, sure. Uh, but it's just not not smart, especially if it gets past like three teams. Yeah. Edie Gonzalez. Not only did he set does he do the most unlikely parlay like like nine or 10 teams not only is it like so unlikely to win i was looking at the one last night and you might you can reference it if you want to the specifics i was looking at the ones he sent last night and i was thinking to myself like he can't how do you enjoy that like you can't there's so many games you only have so many different screens well. to be able to watch the game if something good happens in one of the games it's hard to even enjoy it because you're like eight other games good things need to be happening so you tell me, because I feel like you're more of a parlay guy. How do you enjoy that? That oh, is, sounds like the worst, most painful, pointless thing. It, it's, I, a, it's a process. And here's the thing. I saw a comment once on like Instagram that was like, if you're doing any more, if your parlays have any more than two legs in them, you don't know how to fucking parlay. I thought about it. I was like, I, I, this is one of those passing comments, but that's a good philosophy, you know? So yeah. uh, I don't know. I, it's, how many uh, times probably, have you lost a straight bet? Sorry to cut you off. How many times have you just lost a straight bet? All of us, right? And then we're like, I'm going to get seven of them right. What? I can't. I can't pick oh, you're just going to pick all the favorites. Oh, you're just going to pick all the underdogs against the spread. Like, it just doesn't work. I mean, you could win every now and then. But anyway, sorry. Go it's ahead. so stupid, too, because I'll see PD's parlays. They'll do a fucking nine-legger on the Fine Line Sportsbook, by the way. And it'll be like, uh, here's my parlay. And I'll look at it, and I'll be like, there's no way that's going to hit. Five minutes later, I've got 10 bucks on it. And I added three legs. I'm a piece of shit, Mitchie Steve. That being said, you know, there's that old saying from Tupac. If you don't want to be about it, do about it, right? I got an idea here. Why don't we go yeah. ahead and share our screen? Why don't we show a couple live bets being placed on the old fine line sports book? And I got a couple games I got my eyes on. My eyes sure. on my boy. Here, the here's way. the other. Hey, here's the other thought I will say. If you, you know, if you think that you're going to be able to like predict all these games and you want it to be a big parlay, oh. part of my problem, I didn't analyze PD's picks that much, but Part of my problem is like the enjoyment of watching and being like, oh, I need this to happen. You know what I mean? Like, so if you're going to do it like throughout the day or like you do parlays across a couple, a weekend, right? I'm not, yeah. Ooh, I, I'm big on NFL parlays. I don't, I don't like that, but I like it better than betting seven games at the same time that you all need something to happen. And you can't even like, you can't even watch and focus. Like, I don't know. It's, it's terrible. It's like, you could be watching three different games if you have multiple screens or whatever you're like oh these are all going well but then you got to check your phone and be like oh man well you know, the reds aren't gonna win so it doesn't matter and it's like ah, it's just so dumb so dumb also nobody gave me the respect i deserved in the group chat no but pd no pd sends us this hot tip and i had just saw on sunday morning the reds game got postponed and one of his hot picks is reds money line and it was a big time dad joke, but I said, does your, you know, does your source account for games that are postponed or does that not count? Of course, Petey was crickets. I think he was embarrassed. Yeah, he was embarrassed. That guy's a fucking bum, right? That's uh, by the way, new uh, Petey Parlay. He's going to be doing a new AQT with, but it's not going to be AQ, AQT with Mitchie Steez. It's going to be AQT with Petey Gonzalez. All right. <laughs> oh God. They waited, they waited to drop this bombshell on me. I've been, no, it's not a bombshell. Time. First and foremost, I could talk to you left, right and center all fucking day. You punk, you punk ass 
bitch. All right, you listen. Guys, imagine I, having a buddy. Oh, and I, I don't want to have. Anthony, I don't Anthony's a good buddy. Hey, Anthony's Mitch, a good you want to do a show where we like and why. talk about sports on a Saturday? No, no, no. I don't work on weekends. You bum. You bum. What are you, Lenny Jets? Dude, got, ladies and gents, I hope throw in the comments how you feel about this. Imagine you had a buddy, and he's a great oh. buddy, and you love talking to him. Every time you have a conversation, yeah. your buddy says, Hey, we should be recording this. Hey, why don't we get on camera and record it and post it to YouTube? No, like, I don't come on, that. dude. Come on. What are you gonna do? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'll, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll do 50, I'll do 12, 50. 12 oh, 50. oh, oh. Hey, wait, before you do this, I want no. you to consider some things. I want you to consider. Good. Good. Well, those are the three picks I like. I'm gonna parlay those, but now I'm gonna do it. Okay, you were already ready for that. You're already ready for that. All right. Do a 10 legger. Got it. Yeah. Um you do a 10 legger after reading. So, um, Padres, I was just saying for NBA stuff, just considering like just looking at where people are at in the standings. And if anybody has, if certain teams don't have anything to play for and that type of thing, we're at that point in the year. I think there's two, what, two games left, a game left. Who cares? You know, but let's it do that matters right. actually a lot. Oh, yeah, I got you. Hey, who won last game, Angels and Astros? Uh, usually I wouldn't know that. Astros last game. Let's just look up Astros schedule because that'll that's how you spell schedule. Yeah, and nice. I think it was. I think the Angels beat them. They were up five four when mm. I went to bed. Yeah, five four. You know what? I think the Astros. They got that little hey. uh, Hispanic guy, Altuve. Altuve. I was so disappointed in him. So disappointed. He's like literally. He, he's like my height. I think he's actually a little bit shorter than me. Little fella. Uh, wow. And just a baller. And then you find out he freaking was a. You know, he was one of the biggest culprits in that in the whole cheating scandal. A real piece do, of shit. You know about? Do you know about that? I feel like you're not a baseball guy. Do you know? Yeah, we're doing science. It was like cheating, but like you know, unwritten rules cheating, right? No, 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 no. no. It was beyond that. It was oh. beyond Tell me that. more, dude. They had. Uh, okay, so. I'm going to do this a, a disservice because I don't have like, you know, bullet points of everything they did, but they had, I believe like monitors in the dugout and stuff that were stealing signs from people. Ooh. They had people at the home stadium in Houston, but you can hear it on video. You should look it up. It's wild. Like banging on trash cans before the pitch. And it was like, boom, boom. For example, was fastball. Okay. Boom was here's coming. Here comes an off speed pitch. Dude, in Major League Baseball, that's everything. So their hitters, like, more often than not, when they were at home especially, knew what was coming. I mean, that's insane. So, and, and then there was also um, Altuve. I don't know if this is ever confirmed, but it was, like, pretty sure. It wouldn't just come out of nowhere. Had, like, a buzzer inside his jersey. And it would buzz before the pitch. Buzz once for, you know, I don't know how they did it, but you get the concept. Like, that's more than unwritten rules. Like, if you are just glant, like, there was one the other day about a catcher was really pissed because the guy's at the plate and he like was glancing down at the sign and the catcher was pissed. Like, dude, don't. it's like, dude, be more secretive with your sign. Like, that's fine. If you're going to glance down and be like, Oh, there comes a fastball. Like you gotta be better. But if you have like, if you're using technology and you got people in the whole stadium, you know, I, and by the way, I have so many conversations with Anthony that I know that, he hasn't been listening for most of this. Oh, the guy had a vibrator in his ass and they were vibrating <laughs> it. And then he came all over baseball. I don't know. Electrocuted his prostitutes, prostate or whatever. That was a really fun uh, betting scene. You just wanted to place your bets. I thought we were going to maybe walk through. We're going to show it. We're going to show it. By Fine Line Sports. All right. Listen to this. Hey, uh, Mitchie Steez. Uh, uh, follow Fine Line Sports, right? On social media platforms. Instagram number two zero one five zero three four one five one. Shoot Davy Fine Lines a text. Set up an account. All right, you mentioned you know the Degens boys. He's gonna hook you up. He's gonna give you a bunch of cash. I just used his book. Look how easy it was. And guess what, Bubba? When I win money, which I don't, no ten ninety nines. You don't have to pay taxes if the money doesn't exist, Mitchie. That's legal standing through the Internal Revenue Service Code. So. Yep. Uh, any thoughts on fine line sports? The old Davey fine lines. Davey fine lines is an honorable man. He's a, he's a great guy. He reached out to Anthony uh, initially back in the fall. And, uh, I mean, we struck gold. I mean, it's just this, this first guy that reaches out, Anthony struck gold. I had nothing to do with it, uh, but whatever. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, he's great. 
He's great. Dave, if you're watching this, I'm sorry that I hope you understand it's tough for me to get through, you know, a, a full promotion. If I make one statement that suggests that Anthony isn't our Lord and Savior and does everything, he cuts it off and goes, oh, me. It's kind of hard. I get sidetracked. But Dave, stand up guy, great person. Dave, greater than my bookie. That's not even close. Hey, you ever I, think about he uh, is the anti my bookie? If you ever had an experience with my bookie, he's the opposite. So just all good things. And Dave loves the Jewish community. Unwritten. It's kind of an unwritten thing. But we haven't had that type of, you, what do you, the unwritten? Unwritten. Well, let's assume that I'm saying Jewish people, why would you hate? I'm just saying he, he's against <laughs> anti have you ever Have you ever thought about piercing your nipples and hooking them up to a car battery, Mitchie? I'm in rare air today. Yeah. <laughs> uh did you see that on like i'm on like my fifth breath breath right and your fifth breath mint what does that do with you i don't know good uh oh man oh man oh anyways i'll do that so bang bang buzzing playing stop right yeah dude and like he had i mean he had all the big hits i mean i think they're playing uh the dodgers and in houston he had this just electric i was rooting for them like they were kind of under, they don't win all the time Astros. And, you know, he had this electric walk-off Homer and who knows if like every single part of what they were doing was, was, was cheating. How is it cheating? Huh? The guy's using his little fingers in between that the catcher's doing little fingers and someone can see what he's doing and they alert him. How is that? that? I don't, that's not cheating. Yeah, it is dude. Yeah, it is. What's stopping Altuve from looking around, just looking at the guy's uh, crotch and being like, Oh, it's a fastball coming my way. Nothing really. There was no That's foreign cool. substance used. There was an advantage for sure, but the advantage was someone using, looking in. Like there wasn't like a microchip plugged into a baseball. It was just some guy looking at some guy. I mean, like, oh, this next one's a fastball. Let Altuve know, you know? It's just a different type of sport. It, it would be like, it would be like if a defensive back had a fan that was able to get into the huddle. All right, let's say, uh, you know, the, the Dolphins are playing the Bills, all right, for example, to go to the playoffs, all right? Talk and we uh, got – I already know where this is going, you dick. No, I'm not going to do this. 26 I'm not going to do this. 26, I'm not going to do that. No, <laughs> let, let's put it this way. Let's say that it's, it's like somebody's able to get into the huddle, hear the play that Tua is calling, not only the play that he's calling, but exactly where the ball is going. And then a fan is able to buzz the outside linebacker and say, hey, he's throwing a five-yard out. That's how easy it becomes for a major league baseball hitter when they know through cheating and through all these things going on and multiple people conspiring to tell them what's coming, that's how easy it is for them. It's still hard to hit a baseball. It's like the hardest thing in any sport. But if you know the pitch is coming, that's it. The biggest thing is it's a guessing game. You got to figure out what do you think he's going to do. That's not cheating. That's what NFL. That's what NFL ball clubs do all the time. NFL ball clubs. Oh, you guys cut this guy right before week one. Let's sign him because we're playing. I mean, come on. At this what point, I, you, yeah. you're saying, dude? I'm saying like it's like you know what's coming because you're illegally getting into their clubhouse, their you're huddle, they're projecting what the play is going to be to everyone. If someone uses some sort of extra tool to, to listen in on that and let the other, that's called an advantage. You need to change your offensive game plan. You're, you're just, baseball's a dumb fucking sport, Mitchie. There's all these unwritten rules. Can't flip the bat. Oh, it's different because it's baseball. You know what? I don't want to hear that, Mitchie Steez. No, 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 no. Look, the flipping the bat, the, the, some of the things you're comparing it to, flipping the bat, deciding that, oh, if somebody cut this guy, we're going to pick him up. That's not mid game using extra things that you're not supposed to, to figure out exactly what. Okay. So Luke Keekley, Luke Keekley does a real good job of studying tape. And one week goes, oh, wait a minute. I know this formation. Cause I saw this in the last game. Oh, he just said vitamin C. This is going to be a flat to the right. And he calls out the offense. You're What's making the, a good point. That? You're making a good point. Um, just an advantage. It's not cheating. Now, if he had pine tar or whatever, and he's using like a foreign or stick them if you're a wide receiver, right? That's different. That's a foreign substance that's giving you a clear leg up on the competition, right? If if your team, you know, why, why, you know, 
does Nick Saban because he puts a lot of time into recruiting and scouting and all that stuff and he's really good is that is that illegal because he gets a leg up if you have somebody in the stadium that can't so here let let me let me put it this way you're making very good points don't get me wrong it's 100% cheating but anyway you're making good points Altu, you said what's stopping Altuve from looking down and getting it? Nothing, nothing, right? But when you use people that are not in the game, fans, other co- people that have a different vantage point and are using technology to alert you, like, dude. Like a defensive coordinator up in the owner's box using a headset to communicate with the middle linebacker? Before the play? Yeah, it's a different sport. Hey, fellas. It, no, it's the... It's, it's athletics. It's not what are you talking about? Hey, hey, big dog. You're, this you, again, slam. you're making good point. It's just, it, it's just so different, dude. The whole game is the pitcher versus the hitter. What's coming? Like the pitcher being deceptive and where he's throwing and all that. Yeah. That's just, that's just the way that it's set up. So in the NFL, it's a lot different. There's all this game tape, and it's just like I don't know. I don't know. I, it, it's a uh, it's, it's sport. Here's what I'll say, Mitchie. It's so goddamn yes. boring that we're talking about this more in the NFL. If this happened to be like, no, the NFL is interesting. When this is more interesting, the actual game, the, the, the scandal is more interesting than the game of baseball. That's when you know you got a boring fucking sport on your hands, Bubba. Yeah, I just, I would disagree with you there. Wrong. Um, I was, I was disappointed in that. I don't know. I think it's dumb. Um, but I mean, people, I also, I, I, to your point, I also think people overreacted to it, but I was just disappointed in the fact that it's, it's supposed to be not p- that people don't do that. I get the cheating and the competitive advantage, blah, 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 no, blah. Ethical Mitchie strikes again. If you're not cheating, you're not trying Mitchie. Dude, I, I agree with you to, to an extent on that, but I don't know. I, I just like, okay, let me, let me put it this way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Steroid era. I don't care at this point at first, like when I was a little kid, I was heartbroken and it's like, Oh my God, like nothing counts that they did. But okay. I get it. It gives you a, you're imagining little Mitchie getting upset. I'm imagining little Mitchie with your current head with a little baseball cap going on. The game has been changed. You ruined the game. (laughs) That's legit how I was anyway, (laughs) but I've, I've grown past that. Okay. I don't care. Barry Bonds is an incredible player. Um, I don't like him. I don't really like that he, that he did it, but whatever. Everybody was doing that. However, something that I will always love about Ken Griffey Jr. He is, he, he is, I'd have to see the list of the guys, but he is so far, in my opinion, ahead of anybody in his era in terms of home runs that took steroids. Because it's clear that he did not. And you, the, the logic behind everybody else was, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Everybody's doing it. And he was just so fucking good and you so know, much better you didn't what? Taste, you didn't taste test his piss you don't know if he wasn't on the road you're right i guess i don't know for a fact but uh it's pretty clear the guys that did and i you know i have a feeling that would have come out at this point um but yeah you're right okay sure he could have done it but like i'm 95 percent sure without actually knowing the guy that he did it the right way and he was just unbelievable and uh you know so I got a little, I got a little bit of that, you know, it's integrity. It's integrity. If you are trying to get a competitive advantage, I get it. It's all about winning. You want to do that. But you know, if you're getting, but like, I just think it's like, you just should feel lame. Like you're wearing a, you're getting like a buzzer and you know, the guys on the other side, sure. They're doing their own, their own shit to figure out what's coming. But like, you know, you're doing way more and you have that advantage. It's like, I don't know, dude. It's like you guys are already good players. Why don't you just study the tape? Yeah, you know who oh, else are really good players? The, the New Orleans Saints in that uh, NFC Championship game a couple years against the Rams. Then an officiating issue botched them. What are you talking about, Mitchie? Any instance, any example you can use to get a leg up on your competition, it's working smarter versus harder, Bob. And just know this. Anthony Price is going to try to sta- What was the Saints connection? Remember the – I know the game you're talking about, but how's it? Well, the Saints were really good. They're professional athletes. They did everything the right way. They got all the way up to that point, and then someone fucked them, right? If they, maybe if they'd cheated before that game, they would have been up 14 at that point. They wouldn't have needed that play to score. You know, that's what I'm saying. You got to cheat, Mitchie. You got to cheat. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, fair point. That makes sense. I thought where you were going with it was Bounty Gate. Oh, no. That being said, you know. Hey, by the way, a year, but this uh, new Lenny tweet, you guys are 
going crazy, man. No, I didn't. Listen to this. You think he'd wait for the gens to come back up in September or whatever? This fucking crazy guy. He tweeted, uh, and I responded. I was like, Lenny, what are you doing? Yeah. Actually, he tweeted out this morning, 10:50 a.m. I don't even should I even read this, man. Well, this is kind of grotesque. It's just kind of offensive to the senses, you know. You want to read Hold it? On. He said, and I quote, I shouldn't be laughing because it's just not, it's not appropriate. I, I'm thinking of a different joke right now, which is why I'm smiling. But he said, if women can have abortions, men should be able to drunk drive. Like, why would he say that? Yeah, that's tough. I don't, that's I don't, tough. I don't think you can really draw a straight line between those two. Well, I mean, uh, we should bring him on. We should ask him. Should I call him? Yeah, you can give him a call. Now, is there a – do we have a, a, a retweet? I'm not saying that Lenny has the biggest following on Twitter, but do we have a retweet to uh, to like ratio, or to a comment ratio, right? Isn't it – I just commented and said, Lenny, what are you doing? No one liked it. No one retweeted it. Okay. Any other comments besides you or are people just ignoring this guy? Yeah, pretty much. I, I think, yeah. A just society, people are just ignoring him. Um, oh, Fine Line Sportsbook just followed him back, though. I don't know if that's a uh, yeah, Fine Line Sportsbook's one of his one of his followers, as you can see from here. I mean, what, how is there a crossover there, Mitchie Steves? Safe and legal abortion should be natural born right in this country. Safe and legal. This guy's talking about drunk. Yeah, drunk. yeah. I don't see how the, how that concept. Um... He got. He's following nineteen people. He's following Julian Castro. Cory Booker, Beto O'Rourke, Pete Buttigieg, Andrew Yang, Michelle Obama, Bill Clinton, some guy named Billy Santoro XXX, uh, Joe Biden, the NFL, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Bernie Sanders, CNN, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Elizabeth Warren, the New York Times, and Kamala Harris. I'm like a Democrat. What a combo. I mean, I don't you know. Throw, the, throw in the NFL in there. No, you did. He's following the NFL. The guy's a known Democrat. And he's throwing around stuff like that. I mean, come on. I think that, well, let me even call. Keep talking sports. I want to, I want to, I'm getting pissed off over here, Mitchie. I want justification as to why he would tweet something like that, you know? Yeah, give me, give me a hot 15 seconds here, bub. I will. I'm going to call him right now. He's on speaker. Get him to explain himself, bub. Piss me off. No? What are you drinking over there? Drinking a bang energy? <laughs> yeah. I could hear from the crack. Uh, well, Little Miller, What's that shirt Miller, say? Miller Latte. What's that shirt say, huh? That says inclusion lives here. Yeah, what do you got on that, Bub? I don't know why he said like, his voicemail says it's Brian. That's pretty weird. Well, true. Call him Lenny Jets. Lenny Jets. Hey, what's up, Bubba? How you doing? Good. How are you, man? I'm doing great. Hey, how we doing, Lenny? Hey, this is Mitchy Steez. All right, we're in the middle of a recording of AQT with Mitchy Steez. You know, we, we got a question for you, man. All right, let's hear it. All right, now, earlier this morning at 10.50 a.m., L Jets BBF tweeted. Um, I don't know why you're laughing. Clearly, you know what was tweeted. It's pretty offensive. Do, 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 do you just want to – we want to ask you, do you want to clarify your comments? Yeah, you know, um, sometimes you just, uh, you just hate to see it. Well, you tweeted, if women can have abortions, men should be able to drunk drive. Why did you tweet that? Sometimes you just say, man. I mean, we're just asking you to clarify that tweet. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying that. Uh, you said if women can have abortions, men should be able to drunk drive. Can you just clarify the specifics? Yeah. We know it was a foot and mouth kind of thing, but what, what did you mean by that tweet? Yeah. Yeah, I, I meant, uh, you know, I just meant that uh, I said what I meant. Can you expand on that, maybe an ounce? I, I think it's pretty evident what I meant. You got a good point, Mitchie. Do you have any extra, yeah, any, right. any questions for the guy? I mean, I'm all out of questions on my end. <laughs> Mitchie, you there, Bubba? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, maybe ask the guy a question. We're just recording a live show, you know. Well, I mean, 
You, you want me to ask him another question? I mean, yeah, ask him a question. Ask him to clarify. I just ask him to clarify. Ask him another question. I don't know. I, I know you asked him to clarify, and he said, "I think it's pretty pretty clear what I meant." I, yeah, I guess, Len. You know, how do you? How exactly do you reconcile those thoughts? Where where do you draw a line there from A to B? Because it, it seems like they're just two completely different topics. All a lot of crossover there. You know. Not a lot of cross. I, I get that the general concept is like, hey, if women can do this, then men should be able to do this. But those two topics, I don't really yeah. get out of this. What, what, what are your thoughts? You have some deeper thoughts on uh, safe and legal abortions, uh, Lenny? You know, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever heard the term correlation causes causation. Can you spell okay. either of those words, by the way? That's an honest uh, question. Correct. I can. Yes. Okay. Spell but correlation for us right now. Causation. Okay. So. Uh, with the fact of, uh, of the matter, it's causation. That, uh, it just you know, one leads to the other, you know. He can't spell so it, uh, he can't spell it. Uh, one of the you want to say that leads to the other, so I think it'd be right. If, uh, I don't think you own. could define either of those, right? I think you heard a smart person say both those words once, and now you're just saying it. That's debatable. It's, it's so it's debatable, so it's there's some truth in that, then okay, fair yeah. enough. So what does what what does, let me ask you this? What does the word correlation mean? It means there's a relationship uh, between two uh, two variables. All right, I'm gonna here we go. Define you're fucking googling, aren't you? Piece of shit. I, I promise. Do wait. Defined. That sounded way too official. Correlation. <laughs> a mutual relationship or connection between two or more things. You piece of shit. All right. How about this? Define. Oh yeah. How about this? Define causation for me. Define causation. You just pretend like you didn't hear it, so you can get the other variable. No, there's no chance. He's asking his mom right there's now. No chance. Guess where this guy lives? He's asking. He's talking to a female in the background. Guess who that is? That's his mother. That's his mother, which we love, by the way. We love Mrs. It's, Jets. It's not who is it then? Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Right now? We're in the middle of. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't know what your objective was, but. Uh... My objective was to call you out for a suspect tweet, man. And then today, in today's yeah, exactly. society, I don't know if that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of language is appropriate, you know? It might be. Anyways, how'd your Mother's Day go, Bob? Uh, it was uh, very well. I uh, did, did not spend it with my mother. It was very well, and he didn't spend it with the Okay, that's cool. Um, sweet. So, yeah. So... That's awesome, man. Hey, uh, how is Call of Duty going? Uh, you went uh, just, I told the fans, you went 5 and 49 the other night. By the way, last night I beat you 17 4, where the record was 17 4 and 4 in my favor in the 1v1 arena. Do you have any comments on that? Um, yeah, I just got to play better next time. Okay, so, all right, we're going to end this here. Any, any other lasting comments for the fans that are hanging on the edge of their seats for you to say anything? Yes. Yeah. All right, so that's the end of that. But uh, we're going to wrap this up. Mitchie, see, this guy's an absolute bum. He's a clown. He's a clown. He is. He is a clown. Uh, now. Huh? What's up? I suck Mother's Day. What'd you do? Mother's Day? Uh, went home to Cincinnati. Hung out with the fam. I got a little golf in on Saturday and spent the uh, spent the day <laughs> of with the family. A little brunch. Uh, awful brunch. Awful brunch. My parents are um, the only two individuals that I've heard just like Almost every time that they go out to eat, no. it's like the food was bad. Like almost all the time. Like, and I was even thinking this before, like the other day, like about them, like saying that a lot and being like, I can't remember the last time that like I went somewhere to eat and I was like, it was like really bad where I was like going to make a point of it. <clears throat> it was awful. How bad it was, was terrible. Um, I can't cook for anything. I could have made, I got, I got a, uh, they have three things on the freaking menu. All okay. right. It's like, come on. Now I got literally a waffle, okay. scrambled eggs and bacon. The bacon was good. The scrambled eggs were like, I could make better scrambled eggs and I could go to Kroger and get the, you know, Lego, my ego waffle and heat it up and it would be better than what, what I had. Oh. And it took like an hour. It was insane. It was insane. Um, but I would prefer that like my food is bad. Like when I'm with my parents, like I would prefer that my food is bad and not theirs. Cause like, I know that they're going to like freak out and blah, 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 make a whole thing. Oh um, but both of ours were, 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 was really bad. So you know, but this, we still had a good time. Example of, 
Now, this is an example of privileged Mitchie striking again. All right. Because here's the thing, man. You know, you know, the last time I had bad food at a restaurant, never. I've never had bad. And guess what? If I did and it wasn't good, I probably just wouldn't go back. But what constitutes bad food, Mitchie? Come on. What constitutes bad egg? What was, give me the specifics. Bad waffle. What was uh, cold, undercooked. Um, I mean, runny oh. eggs. Runny, the, my dad's eggs were black. Yeah, I feel like you're, that's just a made up thing. You just, there's that's, that's not, it's <laughs> not. Mine had hints of that, but like his looked like they were cooked on a dirty surface and also burnt. I mean, it was really bad. I was very hungry, ate all my food, didn't say a word about it. I'm going to call okay. that privilege. You know, man, yeah. we're just talking about it now. It was not good food. Um, Hey, I'm not calling the, the restaurant out or anything. Right? I'm not calling them out by name. Um, it was bad. We, uh, my sister and I both had uh, M- Moscow. Mules. Uh, no, 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 no. It, but it's like that. It was like a combination of a Moscow mule and a um, mimosa, I believe. Was, I don't know. But it was really good. That made the food more bearable, for sure. Probably because you were fucking hammered. But, no, uh, I, I wouldn't say that, but. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what, they, you know, you got, you got to really botch food. Maybe, maybe I just have low uh, expectations. Maybe I will put anything in my body at any given point food wise. So at this point, I'm just like, yeah, what are you going to do? Thank you for that I, clarification. What? Oh yeah. yeah. Food wise. Oh yeah. Ha ha ha. Funny. Uh, not really, not really, not really an appropriate joke in today's climate, but uh, you know, if you want to make that kind of joke, you can. Um, uh-huh. You know, here's the thing, Mitchie. I'm trying to get the sticker off this thing. Anyway, so Mother's Day is pretty good, right? Um, that's pretty good. That's all you did. That was it. We hung out. We watched uh, three episodes of Evil Stepmothers. Man, that sounds just fucking terrible. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like a, you know, it was real life stories of of brutal stepmothers that in multiple cases i believe ended up murdering people so hey you know what man sometimes it does be like that you know what's funny is i was talking about this the other day my mom why do we joke about murder but we don't joke about rape you're just like oh yeah like yeah yeah that's what i was thinking no No, i was just thinking that you're like oh in a lot of cases uh, they kill them right and we're like oh wow it's crazy what if you were like yeah in a lot of cases they all got raped you'd be like oh oh yeah that was funny too they don't really joke that's interesting that is interesting. That is interesting. Um, interesting. I just thought like you would think that. It's, I mean, it is worse, right? I mean, you die. You no longer cease to exist. Everything you know or will know has been taken away from you. All the personal relationships that you've built, gone in an incident. You no longer are of this world. Oh, God, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no more death jokes, Mitchy. No more death jokes from the next gen of gens. Not really appropriate yeah. today's climate, you know? Yeah, not appropriate today's climate, uh, you know, in, in this day and age, if you will. But yeah, I was not trying, I wasn't trying to like make a- Oh, no, don't make light of it. Yeah, I got you. We were on the same page. Okay. But and, but what was interesting is I was thinking about uh, my mom, I got her to watch um, Breaking Bad. I got <laughs> both my parents to watch it. I'm obsessed with the show, like greatest of all time, in my opinion. We're watching through it. Right, my mom, huh? How many times have you seen it? Full time through? First time through? Three. Oh, you full see times full through. series three times full. Three time. times through. It really is. You know, I was just saying this the other day. It, it, it's an extreme thing to say. I think Breaking Bad is the greatest television series that has ever been created. Ever. And it, it's just, how do you beat it? You know? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, and, you know, the three times through, by the way, to clarify, obviously on my own, with my parents, with, um, and then with Cheska. And then there's certain select episodes I've gone back and watched. I haven't watched any of the episodes in a while. Um, mm-hmm. I will in a few years, though, probably go, go back when I like forget a little bit more. Cause like I've watched so much. So, like, you know, I got to take a little breather. But anyway, we're going through that. And my mom loves Lifetime movies. She loves uh, 48 Hours Mystery and all these things about you know, that are like legit real life people that, that, you know, 
killed somebody or sometimes they're like the, the stories are like shows like people are still on the loose and you know whatnot we're watching and like somebody gets beat to death in breaking bad and my mom's like, oh my god it's just so hard to watch and it's like mom it's a show like you it's not real things like this happen but it's not real you're like majorly affected by it it's hard for you to take you watch shows that are real people doing this anyway you I don't know if anybody else that there, you drink your white wine and like oh my gosh wow <laughs> like yeah come on i tell you what i started with because i just rewatched the whole series i finished up probably last week um and i, t- I haven't watched it since eighth grade mitchy steez let me tell you what going through that after and that's been a that's been a couple of years it's better on the second run through it's like a fine wine dude it got better i tell you what brian cranston probably the maybe one of the greatest actors ever because there's movies where like you watch something with like McConaughey or whatever. And it's like, okay. Like I saw, I remember distinctly, I always use this example. There's a movie he made a while back called like mud or something like that, or gold. I don't know. He's like a prospector he, for the movie. He got fat and they fucked up his tooth. So his tooth is like sideways and weird. And there's a gap. So it doesn't kind and he got long hair. So it doesn't fully look like him, but literally the entire movie, it's like, that's McConaughey, right? Like you can tell. I cannot see Brian Cran. Walter White is his, is his own individual entity. I cannot see Brian Cranston in Walter White. That's when you know you've done a good job with a character and acting, right? I would know. I went to Lenny's acting school. I took an application. He taught me everything he knows. He's so good at it. Um, hey, one of the for anybody that's a, a Breaking Bad uh, junkie or big time fan, and since you just rewatched it, I'm, I'm obsessed. One of the best acting jobs that he ever does, if you're going to, rem- if you can recall this scene, it was is. when it was, so it's the scene where um, he's in his old home and Jesse thinks that, well, he knows that, you know, Walt did that with like the kid and all this different stuff. And he comes to his house and he has the, it's the scene where he has the gun pointed to him and there ends up being that circle, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the indent, yeah. That yeah. whole scene, if you rewatch it, like that was what watching it a second and third time, like, like a psychopath did for me. Like when I watched that scene, he, he no like- No spoilers, Mitchie Steves. He acts like he's- so he's like oh no you think it's me i can't figure it out like why you think i'm the one that would do this and then he acts like he's just realizing oh my gosh this is what they did to us they, this is what gus's plan was you know what i'm talking about and then he manipulates jesse and he flips it all back around and when you watch that full scene it's like knowing the knowledge it's one of the best but like, I, I you, jobs i've I, ever I, seen I forgot about that because I literally at the end of this at the end of that episode I can I like I I forgot a lot of big stuff not like big 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 stuff but I forgot like at the end of that episode when they show that uh, the thing at the end and you realize it was the guy I'm like no spoiler but uh, <laughs> but uh, but no when I, when at the end of the episode I was like oh, fuck like shit I for totally forgot the guy's just uh, I I read something a while back every someone said it online at some point every character in that show is an antagonist. There's no protagonist in that show. Every character in that entire series is a piece of shit scumbag who only cares about themselves and is out to fuck the world over, basically. And it may not that extreme. Every character. I thought I would think about it. Name a protagonist. They're all pieces of shit. Walter Jr. (laughs) You asshole. (laughs) You kill yourself, dad. You know? That's an impression of a character. No, I'm a character actor. I'm not making light. I'm not making light. That's an in character actor. I'm a method actor. I cannot believe that. I, I can believe that. I am sorry to the fans that I I should have known. Why are you such a b- 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 bitch, mom? Tell me that's not a good impression of Walter. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I not allowed to impersonate characters, huh? Oh my goodness, that was really bad. Um, that no, but when you think about when you walk uh, through everybody except for him, you got Walt, Jesse, obviously, uh, Saul, all time character. You got um, you have Gus, obviously, who's hardcore one, but Hank, 
his wife marie right yeah. skyler oh my gosh she's the worst well, Gosh, oh, she yeah, it goes back and forth. Oh my, I mean, just it's oh, incredible. Elliot and uh, Gretchen. You know who's not Jesse. is uh is Jesse. Well, Jesse is though. Like he's he he actually is the per- he's the one that you always root for. But you also root for Walt. I think it's such a crazy thing because it's like Walt is like he. he I realized the second time through that. I was brainwashed by how much I wanted him to sit like to do well. And I went back the second time through and I was like, yikes. I feel like I was rooting for him all the way through. And he, I kind of was to an extent anyway, but it's like, he did some really, really awful things. And he completely went off the deep end. So like, he, I don't know, Jesse's like the one, I feel like he kind of root for him, but he also has that phase where he's just like, just a complete, dick and he's he's partying and he's being reckless and he's and you're like what are you doing i thought you said your favorite scene was going to be when he's like i am the danger i'm like come on don't be that cliche i tell you what no. my, favorite, my most i know i'm not saying that's my favorite scene either the one i have to think about it. i have to think about it for a second yeah, but impressive acting for sure the one that sticks with me the most is when he's running back to the house he's getting under the money underneath the house and scott and he, that scream and he's, and he's it's not the, I there and it goes slowly over I thought the laughing was a little overkill, but just like that, ah! just that scream at the realization, dude, that shit had me dialed in. I was like, that was so visceral. That was just like, I was putting myself in his shoes. I was like, what are you going to do with it? You just fucking have to scream like a, like a gorilla at that. Like, what are you going to do? You know? Yeah. I think one of the top one, I'd have to think we should, Hey, on the next show, we should, we should do like a top five favorite scenes, maybe something like that. Okay. Uh, but I think that um, just, I'm blanking on it just now. What was the one? Oh, 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 the scene where, so Hank knows it's not the scene on the, on the toilet, which, oh. which is crazy, but the scene where Hank knows and Walt comes over to his house and he shuts the garage. Oh, that is like, oh my God. And Walt is like being like a little, he's being like soft, basically, where he was trying to back out of it. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Blah, 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 blah. And then, like, he finally, just, like, I can't remember exactly what he says. I should know three times through, but wild. Tread lightly. Yes. He's like, well, if that's the, and he finally figures out, okay, he's got me. And he said, if, if what you say is true, then you should tread lightly. I was like, uh, everything just, everything just like was shattered at that point. It's like, I think there was like six or seven episodes still left. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen here? How I got back into bring Matt, I watched uh, El Camino or whatever, El Camino Royale or El Royale. Yeah, I thought it was good. I, I watched that like out of the blue randomly because I was like, oh, I remember this show from like, you know, forever ago. And I was like, man, I wonder, you know, I'll go to, I'll watch the first one again. And uh, yeah, I, I started Better Call Saul. I tell you what, man, uh, the first couple sucked. I don't spoil anything. I'm, I'm through the second season. But I tell you what, I know eventually what happens with Saul, but him and Kim, they make such a great couple. It's pissing me off because I know something bad is going to happen and I just don't want to. Yep. Also, by the way, I got a thing coming up in two minutes. We got to wrap this up, Bob. This has been a great time. Yeah. This is great. I love breaking down. I can't believe this is where we went. But anyway, one more thing on, on Better Call Saul. I got to go back and watch. Like, it was one of those where I, like, you know how you watch, you stop, you forget where you are. It was like that times a million for me. So I think I'm into season three. But then, like, the last time I watched was probably a year and a half, two years ago. And I remember, like, it's the worst feeling when you go to Netflix and you start watching and you're like, oh, God, I don't remember anything like i don't i don't remember like where they're at like so i know general concepts i wouldn't be able to spoil anything for you but character arcs no so we should watch for the show we should just start making this part of the the show too i mean great sports talk we had today we talked about baseball which hey, you know, wait, not- before, last thing last thing before you go did deshaun watson do it yes Okay, that's all we need to know. That's coming from the mountain. Mitchie sees accused rapist. Mitchie sees just accused the black man of rape. We're going to wrap this up. Thanks, Bob.